Hello, you wonderful people, and welcome to another episode of Super Fantify. This being a show where we talk about TV shows as a supernatural fantasy and or science fictional genre. For today's episode, I'm going to talk about the latest episode of Doctor Who, as well as the latest episode of Charmed. Like always, if I'm talking about something that you want to listen to, you can always look in the description down below. I could the time when I start talking about each of the respective shows. So, for example, if you want to hear what I say about this week's episode of Doctor Who, you can skip to what I had to say about this week's episode of Charmed. But the first thing I'm going to talk about is this week's episode of Doctor Who. So, interestingly enough, the team finds themselves in what is essentially the time of the witch trials and stuff like that. And immediately the doctor's in a situation of like, oh, do we interfere or not? The doctor's initially kind of like, don't interfere, we gotta let things play out the way they're supposed to. But even then, the doctor can't help herself but interfere in this circumstance. It's kind of a funny, like, do as I say but not as I do type of thing. Because you say it and then you immediately contradict it. Because even Grimm's like... What well, happened to the whole life? Because Grandma's like, you're not going to interfere, right, Doctor? And she does. Sally, I mean, I guess in the end, it didn't change too much because she, Sally wasn't able to get to Willa's grandmother in time. I was like, oh, is she going to? No. So that ended up turning into this very interesting situation. I love the Doctor using uh, the psychic paper to be like, oh, yeah, I'm witch hunter finder general. And then later on, when King James sees it, it's like, oh, apprentice. She's like, what? She looks at it because I guess it's just because like in his mind is like no woman could be in any, any powerful position. So any position it would have seen on a paper would have been some lower position. So it put her as an apprentice rather than a general like Becca saw. So I thought that was kind of interesting. And I just love the doctor being like, wait, what? And he's like, oh yeah, of course you're an apprentice. It's like, oh yeah, use witch, use women to track down other women. Because like, oh yeah, because you're ineptitude and you're being nosy and um, what was it? being gossipy and stuff like that, and the doctor's looking at him like, what the, I love that whole turnaround, it's kind of like, man, that sucks, even later on, she's like, oh yeah, we were working on it, he's like, oh, no, 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 you know, you you keep doing what, you know, being nosy and stuff like that, like you're supposed to do, I, as your king, will handle all the strategizing. Also, interestingly enough, uh, King James is played by Alan Cumming, I saw a bit of the preview from last episode, because I try not to watch too many of them, but I saw a clip of the preview, I was like, is that Alan Cumming? I'm like, it can't be. Charles, that's all he is. So I know, I had no idea. Like, I looked it up. He's a Scottish-American actor. I had no idea. I didn't look up beyond that. It was just kind of like something that popped up, because I was like, oh, is he British or something? Because I wasn't 100% sure. Because Because he has a very, like, some of the things I've seen him, and he has a very, like, I guess you would make the argument posh, like, demeanor. Like, in the, at least, like, the cadence in which he speaks in certain regards. Like, the most recent thing I saw him is Instinct. He had a very particular cadence about how he talked. That's why I'm, But I feel like he kind of has that in every role. Because I think that's just his natural voice, I feel like. But maybe just in that particular role, he did it even more. I'm going on a tangent. But I was like, oh, my God, Alan Cumming. I was like, oh, that's so cool. Because um, it's just like the Chris Knopf situation to me. It just kind of caught me on guard a little bit. I mean... It's just, it's just that situation of, like, it rarely happens where, like, I'll recognize an actor up on Doctor Who like that. It, it happens from time to time. So, it just, it's just one of those things. Because I feel like, because I'm probably not that familiar with a lot of European actors. So, unless I've seen them in something else, like, from the UK or whatever, like, some other TV show, which the very limited amount of, like, British TV shows I've seen. Like, if I've seen them in that, then I'll probably know, or I've subsequently seen them in other stuff that's... You know, across the pond, I guess would be kind of the turtle phrase in that regard. Then probably, it's nevertheless. You get what I'm trying to say. But it was kind of this very interesting situation because it's like, because the fact is, like when um, Yaz went to go to Willa and that tree started going up, I'm like, oh, she's actually a witch, isn't she? That'd be kind of interesting that ended up being the case. It's like, no, she's not. I was like, I was like, so is that something connected to her grandmother? Which technically it is, but it wasn't directly connected to her grandmother. That was kind of interesting. What it ended up being, it's like, oh yeah, the dirt's actually alive, or at least the mud is actually an alien species, but it's like, are you one thing, are you a whole bunch of things, and one, they're resurrected the dead. I'm like, oh, that's just creepy and interesting, because it's like all the people that Becca killed have been possessed by these things, and then I love the doctor trying to figure everything out, because it's like, okay, so what's up with this whole situation? I also love the fact is that the king took such an interest in Ryan immediately be like, oh, Ryan, hey, what position do you have? He's like, oh, I do the paperwork. He's like, oh, marvelous. And I even love it and just be like the conversation, like, oh, why don't you trust me? What was it? Oh, he was like, oh, you were, well, no, I think it was Graham. He was like, oh, Graham, you're going to be my new witch finder. This hat belonged to my previous witch finder, Scotty. Uh, he saved my life once, but then he betrayed me, so then I had him shot. <laughs> it's like, what? But he's like, 
And Graham's like, well, I won't betray you. He's like, I, I can't. I, he's like, you can trust me. He's like, I trust no one. I'm like, ooh. And then he explains it later on to Ryan because he's like, oh, yeah, I lost my dad when I was young. And Ryan's like, I can understand. And I lost my, my mom and then I lost my grandma. And then um, you have him be like, actually, it was my mother. Then King James was like, my mother was actually murdered. My mother murdered my dad. She was imprisoned, and then she lost her head. She got beheaded. And then other people who took me in ended up mysteriously dying. He was even like the other person, the final person. They were a mysterious circumstances around their death. Because even Ron was like, oh, okay, that's that's much worse than my situation. And he's just kind of like, miraculously, I've survived everything, but the people around me haven't. He, after he was all said and done, he's like, Woo. he's like, oh, I actually feel good getting that all off my shoulder. Thanks for listening, Ryan. I was like, that's so interesting. Almost to a certain degree, almost had Ryan be almost like a therapist for King James in that regard. So, you know what I also thought was kind of interesting? They never really covered it in the episode. Maybe I'm just being stupid, don't remember it. Like, Becca called the doctor out for using the Sonic. Did she ever use the Sonic around Becca? I was like, that, I feel like that never came up. It's like, I, I vividly remember her using it around Willa and around the resurrected people, but I don't really remember her using it around Becca. Maybe she did, and I'm just being stupid. It's also interesting, because it's like, this whole situation, because obviously you know that's that time period where it's like, oh, everything's Satan, evil, so on and so forth, and like, but in this ep, they took it to extremes, because she was like, oh yeah, I shot all the horses, because they were part of, I was like, I've never heard that. In Has that ever come up in the witch trials and stuff like that? Because she's like, oh, she's in a powerful position, because she married up. It's even more messed up in many regards because it's like, oh yeah, you were literally about to condemn your cousin because her. I didn't expect that being like, oh yeah, me and yeah, well, it's like me and Becca are cousins. I'm like, what? And she kills your grandma like that? Like, what? What the hell is up with that? So that was just kind of interesting. I mean, we get explanation for it later on, but I was like, okay. And then it start pointing like, oh, Becca's hiding something. I'm like, what is she hiding? Like, it's like, oh, does she know more about this than she's letting on? It's kind of interesting because the whole episode is dealing around the thought process of fear, letting your fears control you. I mean, that's kind of what that time period's all about and just kind of like the consequences of it. Because it turns out Becca has been infected and she's pointed out all these other women. There's been 36 people she had killed because it's like, oh, they're they're obviously witches. But it's like you the one that's kind of in the center of the situation, but to cover up your part of playing it, you had a whole bunch of people killed and even King James, his whole situation is a fear of the unknown. That's what strives him to be like, oh, this and this and this and that are, you know, satanic. I don't love the whole situation of the doctor being like, oh, the fact of the matter is I can buy if this was, um, what was it she said exactly? One was like, if this was like a mud alien invasion and the other was kind of like the biggest, like, witch hunt in history, but not both on the same day. I can't buy that. And they're like... And King James is like, why is she talking about commerce at a time like this? And Becca's like, I don't know. I was like, okay, little, little, little joke just because that turn of phrase wouldn't make sense to them. Uh, that I, th I was like, just that little bit, just kind of like, oh, it's like, I got it. That's kind of neat. The whole situation of the doctor being captured and being blamed as being a witch and stuff like that. Like I said, I still don't remember her using the uh, Sonic around her, but maybe she did. But it, is, it does kind of show you more, I guess, who, what kind of person King James is in this regard. Because it's like, because before, you know, the Doctor died, he wanted to know, like, about the Sonic screwdriver and, you know, everything. And it's just, basically, the Doctor was saying that he's taking his fear out on everyone else. It's like, you're killing all these people just because you're afraid to face the darkness in yourself. Because for him, it's like, I want to know, you know, knowledge and beauty. Because that's what this all stems from. He wants to understand everything. And if it, there are things that he doesn't understand, in certain regards, he just parallels it to being like, oh, this must be something satanic, and just condemns it. Basically, the doctor was kind of saying this thing I thought was kind of interesting, where it's kind of like, we all want certainty and security basically being able to categorize things as evil or people or as evil or heroic but it's like things are it's just clear cut and dry because i basically there are more to people than that you can't just categorize people like that there are there are a lot of shades of gray and no one's ever that simple things are never that simple things are a lot more complicated but if, if you want to know anything start with knowing the heart understanding the heart kind of to understand his situation is like face what you're kind of running from first and that's kind of like i said the theme of the episode because even the same thing applied to willow like the fact that the matter is she was scared that's why she was like because it's like, how do I stand up to Becca? Because if I stand up to Becca, all she's going to do is condemn me as a witch and I'm going to die. 
And that's why she kind of caved in and sadly said like, oh, yeah, I did think it was kind of w weird that they referred to her as a doctor just because she was scared. She kind of threw the doctor under the bus. Also, the doctor being tied up and she's kind of like, to my, if I was really all like, if I was really like Satan, you know, an agent of Satan, do you think a bunch of ropes, a little bit of rope would stop me? Actually, this is quite a bit of rope, to be fair. Which that whole situation I thought was kind of interesting, kind of getting back to it, because I almost thought she had King James convinced. I thought he was about to change his mind, but just like he still went along with it, just because his fear still drove him. Like I said, it just it fits with that particular time period at the time, so... And it was kind of interesting when it was finally all said and done. The doctor got dunked in water. I did think it was kind of interesting. It's like, oh, where did the doctor go? She's gone. I was like, that's probably going to point to you being even more of a witch. But I love her coming up from the water. She's like, yeah. That was all, you know, by the fact is that being able to hold my breath and getting out of chains, all that's thanks to a crazy weekend with Houdini. And I love her being like, hey, team. Hey, gang. Fam. I love that she keeps doing that and everyone being like, I'm not really so sure about the whole fam thing, but yeah, we got you, doc. I love that her trying to figure out, like, how do I refer to us, you know? It's so it's like a little gag that I really like for some reason. But uh, going back to it, uh, the whole situation being what it really is, like, oh yeah, Becca's infected with these creatures known as Morak, which have, which have been basically in the prison. I was like, oh yeah, this tree was a prison. I guess it's one of those things, kind of like the TARDIS is meant to be, can shapeshift in certain regards. I guess that's kind of all the point, so it can blend in, even though it's kind of stuck looking like a giant police box. I guess the prison... Well, rather, the lock, or, well, the prison slash the lock itself is meant to be like that, very inconspicuous, meant to look like a tree. Because apparently it's been there for a long time. So that was kind of interesting. And the whole reason why Becca ended up killing their grandmother was because, like, oh, she went to her for help, but her grandmother wouldn't chop her leg off like she wanted her to. It was a combination of the fear at that time, you know, being, like, you know, super religious and thinking everything kind of, like, evil and demonic was satanic, and she was afraid of, you know, like I was saying earlier, for things to kind of be pointed towards her direction rather than trying to give someone a chance to explain, you know, like to save her own high, she condemned other people who she knew were innocent, even killed her grandmother just because her grandmother knew the truth about her situation, which is like, there's no guarantee she would have said anything, but you just couldn't take any chances. Like, like I said, just the fear and paranoia of it all. And now, you know, she ended up you know, turning into the queen of the Morak, or rather the queen had infected her, and it's like, oh, we're going to use the king's body to be the vessel for our king, because a tree was hiding an entire army, because it wasn't actually a tree, it's like a very high-tech prison, and the way the ground kind of circulated later on, you kind of see like the circuitry of the security system, I'm guessing the tree and stuff like that at the top is the lock, because obviously what broke off was essentially the lock so I guess all that on top on the surface is just the door to it whereas like the actual prison itself I guess is buried underground but like the whole them being like those little pieces of mud is because they were broken down into their most simplest form their most primal form but when it was all said and done the doctor was able to kind of lock them back up I don't like the fact is that Graham gave her the hat back and everything and it's kind of like oh yeah just kind of be fitting, kind of go full circle and stuff like that. I thought it was kind of interesting when King James ended up, well, killing uh, Becca because he ended up burning her, which is like, oh, she's a witch. She confessed to it. I guess because, you know, obviously the doctor was not happy with him because for one, it's like after everything that's been said, everything that was done, you didn't learn anything. You still were just, you saw what you wanted to see and you weren't willing to kind of put past your own unknowing about anything and just... Because I think the, the thought process, at least maybe this is my thought, that maybe Becca could have been saved. Maybe you could have removed the, like, Morak, the queen of the Moraks, like, from inside of her. So maybe Becca could have been saved, but he, him burning her like that, made, I guess, you know, that pissed the doctor off because it's like, you killed someone. It's like, I told you to do no more killing, and you still went along with it anyway, you know? Which she, she was stayed pissed at him, and he was kind of like, Ryan, she still won't talk to me. Maybe you'll get her to talk to me. And it's like, oh, yeah, that's kind of all on you. It was just kind of an interesting situation. I mean, the doctor's very particular about how she operates when it comes to certain things, and that's just not how, like, she wasn't going to kill them. She was going to lock them back up. That's the right thing to do. It's kind of interesting because it's like, oh, yeah, the lock was so easily broken by an axe was because it got weakened because it has been there for billions of years, which is crazy. 
But then it's that situation I thought was kind of fascinating. I always like it when it comes to time travel stuff. It's like, oh yeah, the reason, because they came here, they're like, oh yeah, we've never heard about this in the history books when it comes to like the witch trials and stuff like that, even though all these people died. It's because they came back in time and made it because the king was like, no one will know about what went down here this day. Like this whole village will be wiped off the history books, essentially. And it's like, okay, so the reason why it doesn't exist is because you made it not exist. But you didn't hear about it because, you you know, the whole cycle of like, oh, yeah. So it's just, it's just interesting. I always like it when time travel stuff does like that, when it kind of plays into itself of like you get the answer. that Not necessarily all you were asking about, but you go like, oh, okay, so that's interesting. Like you kind of play into the history of this situation by making it disappear from history, essentially. I did also appreciate the fact that the king was kind of like, oh, Ryan, would you stay and be my protector? And Ryan's like, I... Nah, I got other stuff to do, but hey, I'll be keeping an eye on you. And what was it? And you know, they make um, Graham makes an Ezekiel reference, and then um, from the Bible, and James is like, ah, Ezekiel, and he was like, Tarantino. I was like, um, which I'm assuming constant here thinking about it. And he said Ezekiel. It's got to be the uh, Sam Jackson speech from Pulp Fiction. I wonder has he done any other. Is that because that's the only one I can think of? Like, not, I wonder has he ever done that in any other movie? Because I mean, I think that's a go-to one when it comes to the Ezekiel. Like, it's like, oh yeah, that's to be Pulp Fiction. That's the only movie I can think of that has that. I mean, especially one that's so famous like that. But nevertheless, so very interesting episode. I mean, everything kind of worked out in the end. All the women that were killed were returned. You know. The, like I, I'm guessing, at least in some regards, stopped a lot of the witch hunt, make sure that, you know, ensure that the people in the village are taken care of and safe before, you know, abandoning the, this village and stuff like that. So, and even Willa kind of going off to want to become a real doctor herself because her grandmother was kind of a uh, doctor, kind of medicine to help people. So, which kind of makes what Becca did even more messed up because it's like your grandma helped people and you kind of... She tried to help you, but because she didn't help you and she knew your secret and she didn't help you, even if she chopped her leg off, I'm sure that wouldn't have done anything. Like, I'm sure it ran so deep that it was basically throughout the rest of her body anyway. So it probably already spread, so there was no undoing anything, but still. Very interested to see what the uh, next episode has in store for us. And now moving on to this week's episode of Charmed. A lot of stuff went down in this episode, so let's break it down. For one, it seems like we're dealing with a scythe uh, of Tartarus, comma, which is interesting, because the only reason why I know anything about that, I guess that's what that's originally built on, just the whole, like, well, because Tartarus makes me think of Persona 3, and that whole situation, which I, I guess... Is that, I guess that pulls from some mythology or something, which I had no idea, but that was kind of that's kind of interesting. But uh, the thing is, it's this prison for a lot of things: gods, demons, anything vanquished, or the bad guys sin, the even worse guys there. So it's kind of an interesting place. So this scythe can unlock that. I even love the whole thing about like, oh, he's a satyr and everything, and it kind of flips the girls out. And it's also interesting too, because it's like, oh man, I thought you guys were a myth. It's like, oh yeah, the charm was just like, which also made me forget. It's like, right, they got visited by a lot of magical creatures over the course of the series. There's a lot of magical creatures that came in. I mean, they're the charm ones. They kind of keep the balance between good and evil. Well, I mean, they're kind of defeat evil. I don't know if it's necessarily a balance, but they, they, they protect the world. So it's kind of like, yeah, you got issues, you kind of come to him, them. Now that's kind of interesting because now, like, oh, yeah, the charm ones are now a thing. People know that now. It's like, oh, we, we need to come to the charm ones. So I guess they can expect more ma magical creatures popping up at their place. Um, what other? Uh, it's interesting, but um, obviously... The side being broken up into three pieces, different people having it, one being the satyr, Leo, Leon, sorry, <laughs> Leon, and then another being that uh, Egyptian goddess. And I love uh, Harry having to explain it, because Maggie's like, are you a satyr too? And she's like, do I look like a uh, debaucherous, wine-swilling goat boy to you? And it turns out she's like some Egyptian goddess of fertility, and, her, and he had to break it down and be like, okay, like... Think Meghan Markle, and they're like, "Oh, you're god, oh goddess," and just kind of bowing and trying to show respect and stuff like that. And here's like, they're new, so I thought that was kind of pretty neat. But it's kind of an interesting thing, just kind of like I'm going to be bouncing all over the place for certain regards. So the fact of the matter is, it spoke volumes that the shadow monster didn't kill anyone. It just took the pieces 
and you just left. I kept noticing that every time. It's like, you could easily kill these people. You're reaching aside of them to get this, but it's like, you could kill them, but you're not. And part of me was thinking to the episode, I was like, is it going to be that we find out that it's Parker? I was like, no, 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 because Parker's secret ends up being he has an autoimmune disease. He's sick and everything. It's like, okay, never, and it's like, nope, never mind. Parker is the shadow monster. It kind of makes sense, too, because Maggie was diving into him, knowing that he has a lot of pain because he's keeping secrets and stuff from her. But now it's like, in the grand scheme of things, it's like, oh, that's his big secret that he was actually keeping for. It's just kind of interesting because he was she was getting close to Parker and was able to kind of dive a little into his heart knowing about the secret. And now it's like later on, she comes across a shadow monster and realizes he's in so much pain. I'm guessing the medication he's taking is legitimately for that. Like it, he might actually have what would be considered an autoimmune disease, but it might be a byproduct of him being half human, half demon. Like his half demon side might legitimately be killing him. He's like, oh yeah, I might not lift a B40. I, I don't know whether that's 100% BS or not. Maybe he doesn't have an autoimmune disease at all, but maybe the drugs or whatever it is that he takes helps him control his demon side more, keeps it from like completely overrunning him and killing him. But in the grand scheme of things, it's like that makes perfect sense why it did. Because Parker doesn't want to be a killer. He's just kind of forced in this situation because his dad's like, oh yeah, do this for me. You failed. It's like, well, Hunter failed too. It's like, don't compare. Your brother got screwed over by a time ripple situation. You just failed on your own. So there's that. But what's also interesting, and that speaks volumes in itself, even with her abilities, she can't read Parker all the way through. I guess he lets her read whatever it is that he wants her to. I guess, I don't know. It's, it's kind of interesting because it's like, there's because obviously he knows she's an empath. So it's like, I guess he brings enough stuff to the surface. Like, I guess when, because her power is getting stronger. So it's going to get to the point where she'll probably be able to see through any deceit that he has. But from now, it seems like as... When it came down to it, she was able to sense the pain that he was in when he was in his shadow form. So, Which is interesting because now it's kind of like, okay, so she's going to be the one potentially with a half demon, half human situation. Which, to be fair, like, because I'm about to compare her to Phoebe. Which, to be fair, I mean, it's kind of cut and dry in some regards of like comparing the sisters. Like, obviously, Mel is Piper and obviously Macy is Paige in certain regards. Obviously, like, the storyline aspect, not her whole situation isn't exact, but still... And that kind of makes Maggie the Phoebe, you know, kind of the one who kind of wears her heart kind of on her sleeve. And, you know, it kind of goes hand in hand with the whole impact situation. But it's, it's not, like I said, it's not clear cut and dry like that. Because the sisters aren't like a reflection of like the Hollowell sisters in some regards of like, they're one for one in some regards. But in other regards, they're kind of a combination of multiple sisters. Like I feel like using Mel, for example, I feel like Mel is kind of a combination of Prue and Piper. That's, that's just me. So... That's kind of an interesting element to it, though. So I'm curious to see that continue for. It is kind of nice, though, that uh, we do kind of learn a little bit about their dad in the regard of, like, Maggie. All Maggie says is he wasn't married to our mom long. That's kind of it. So beyond that, we still don't know much about their dad. But this is the first time their dad's ever come up in conversation. So that's interesting. But um, for her, she's taking steps towards kind of work in psych which is so interesting to me because it's like oh yeah it's going to develop her ability because it's like as someone who reads people's emotions and kind of understanding who they are and where they're coming from that's kind of an interesting aspect because you know that's going to help her on many different levels because it also fits her too as someone who can literally read people's minds and in, in the sense of like not read their minds but rather their emotions their intent it's kind of like Kind of like psychology is kind of like the perfect place to have the, it goes hand in hand with her ability, which is amazing. Kata was kind of interesting the whole aspect of like trying to figure out what she wanted to do with the rest of her life. I also love that she was using um, Harry's training orb to kind of have sex fantasies about Parker. That point where she's like, Oh, yeah, let's go to this Beyonce concert, and then all of a sudden, his shirt's off and he's holding a cat. So there's that. It was almost interesting because, like, that fantasy almost came true. I'm like, wow, it's almost going exactly like your fantasy. And she's like, no Beyonce situation. He's like, wait, what? She's like, nothing. Just keep it small. I was like, okay, that's that was kind of pretty neat. On the other side of things, you had Macy obviously still worrying about trying to figure out her whole situation. Side note, the actress who plays Wagner, their, like the new boss... At the lab, she seems so familiar. I didn't catch a name. I wasn't. I wasn't catching a lot of the names at the beginning, so I don't know. But she seems so familiar, but I just can't quite place her. Maybe I'll know know by next episode what I recognize her from. Uh, really quickly, since I'm on that subject, 
I because basically I did a video like last week at the time I'm recording this last week where I basically Hellboy came up in conversation and then I started whatever reason it clicked on my head like I started thinking about Hellboy one the movie and then like Charmed and I was like wait is that the same and totally is the actor who plays Harry uh, I think it's Rupert Evans uh, yeah is in Hellboy he's like the dude the FBI agent that's working with them. Uh, just the normal dude. He didn't pop up in the second one, but he was only in the first one. I was like, oh my god, that's the same dude. Which is crazy to me, because it's like, holy crap. I don't know what it was. and Because I, I looked it up before I watched this uh, this episode. And I was like, oh man, that totally is. And I was like, am I being crazy? Or is that the same dude? Totally the same dude. That's crazy. I'm just, And it blows my mind that just that came to my mind. Because it never, like... I don't think I would have looked that up beforehand, you know, if I, if that connection hadn't happened in my head of like, is that the same actor? Whatever the case may be, I'm going on a huge tangent. I also love this episode. We learned that he is afraid of these or of insects, and he's like, okay, I made it made it seem like a mild. He's like, I'm super, uh, you know, crippling fear of insects, and they're they're running stairs to get the key, and he's like, the piece of the siphon. You know, he's like. Right behind you, I was like, I like that aspect. Just a little goofy aspect of, uh, I mean, to be fair, I'm not going to, like, rag on him too much about it. Because, like, hey, I'm like, I don't like insects either, so, <laughs> yeah. But nevertheless, uh, getting back to it, Macy has to fire Galvin. That sucks. Which I think at the same time wouldn't look too good either. Like, that element to it never came up. But it's like, oh, that could be kind of looked at a little weird. Because it's like, oh, yeah, he's your friend and everything. But then there's a kind of the complicated situation you have. That would have, I'm sure that would have turned into something potentially. But uh, Galvin kept bringing up stuff. And even Macy was kind of like, oh, oh, wow, of course you do that. Because you don't know which thing Wagner would prefer. So you kind of study both of these things. And it's like, you're dedicated like that. But ultimately... Macy ended up not firing him, but rather, hey, I'm going to work on these expenses and make it so that you are able to save money. And by doing so, you won't have to fire anyone from the team, in particular, Galvin. What I also thought was kind of interesting, too, because we ended up finding out the key is kind of what started all this. It's connected to the sides. It's kind of like the moment Macy found the key, it kind of set all of this in motion. It kind of awoke in the uh, three uh, pieces of side. Also turns out that their mom had a piece of it. So once again, it's just like every time they turn around, more and more stuff leads back to their mom and her secrets. It's kind of like you think it's kind of all out there in the open. It's like, nope, more and more to the depths of like the whole situation with the mom. So that's interesting. But the reason why Macy didn't say anything about the key is like she, you know, because um, the priestess had told her that something connected to her would be found in that column and she did so the key is in some shape or form connected to Macy which in turn connects her to that dagger uh, not dagger I keep on calling it a dagger because because it's not like a long scythe it's like a dagger not really a scythe but it is one it's just I want to call it a dagger just the way it is but obviously it's shaped like a scythe but nevertheless that must that has to be connected to her EB her dark side because I'm thinking like she must have some connection to something or someone in Tartarus for there to be a connection between both of them like that. Like she finds the key that's connected to the scythe, which goes, which is connected to Tartarus. So that's the only assumption I can make at the time. But for her, it's just kind of like you know, after hearing you know what Macy and Mel, not God, Maggie and Mel were keeping from her about her her about like their mom having concerns about the pregnancy it's kind of like yeah like you know it's like i feel this darkness in me and it's just like of course you know she starts kind of ragging on herself a little bit but harry kind of goes like i've watched people for a very long time and there is good and evil in every person but what it all comes down to is who you are your nature your actions and it's kind of like basically saying uh you know macy's a good person so don't doubt who you really are you know which I guess all that kind of instilled in her because that's what changed her mind with the whole Wagner situation. It's kind of like she was going to do it, but then she kind of thought like that wasn't the right thing to do. So it kind of gave her a different perspective of everything of just kind of like, you know, letting her ambitions kind of get the best of her in that regard. Kind of like not looking out for the lab's best interest and that would be keeping Galvin around. And also because that's her friend and firing him would be kind of screwing him over in that regard. So... 
What's also interesting too is that Mel, that girl who came up the mail and everything, and she's like, oh, you need, you know, trying to figure things out. And she's like hitting on Mel hard. I'm like, yo, I was like, oh, like, cause I thought Mel was going to say something, but she didn't. I was like, oh, you're going to be reluctant to kind of get your head in the game with that. I mean, to be fair, it's actually been a while since the whole Nico and her situation. I mean, obviously we're messing with time and stuff like that, but even in the frame of the show, it's been a while because like writing a thesis has been like six weeks with the whole job situation. So it's definitely been a while. So it's probably in that situation. I'm like, oh, got to move on and stuff like that. I thought it is kind of interesting that they use, she's like, oh yeah, you'll, you'll get the spark when you see it. And she later on shows up to be apparently some demon or something because she zaps Mel. And it's like, oh, it's just nice little like wink and nudge to the foreshadowing of that situation. I liked her, the way her power looked, especially when she kind of turns into like an electrical orb and kind of vanishes like that. I thought that's pretty dope. What was also interesting is the pattern it left on Mel's arm is the same that was on their moms. So is she the one that killed her mom? I highly doubt it. She something similar might have attacked their mom, but maybe she and you know Marisol have crossed paths in the past, but maybe she's not the one that actually killed Marisol. I don't know. You know, she might be working for the person who did. Maybe it's someone who's like her. Maybe she's like Parker, where she's a half breed, which would definitely be interesting if that ended up being the case too. They had like a whole bunch of half breeds walking around, which is interesting too because it kind of seems like they might be pointing to the fact is that uh, Macy might be a half breed, whatever her situation is. The EV in her, that darkness, like I like said, we don't know for sure what that is exactly. So that's definitely going to be um, interesting. We do have each of the sisters, like I said, figuring out what they're going to do with their lives because even Mel is kind of being in a stage of like. I'm wondering if everything I was kind of doing, even like the whole job situation, is like the reason why she can't really write her thesis because she her heart's not really in it because it's like everything I'm done, it's just been me following in mom's footsteps. It took like losing everything for her to kind of realize like a lot of that wasn't her own. Like I said, she was just so busy trying to follow in her mom's footsteps because they lost her mom, she's lost Nico, she's lost her job, and now she kind of realizes a lot of that was tied to her mom. It's like, I kind of got to find my own way. I got to find what I want to do, you know? Just like Maggie kind of has, and just like Macy has, which is interesting considering the fact is Maggie was so concerned because she was like, oh yeah, both Macy and uh, Mel know exactly what they want and they're so passionate about what it is so it's just kind of ironic in a sense because now the uh situation is kind of flipped in that regard so but holy crap i'm very interested to see where all this takes us in the next episode like i said this set up a lot there's a parker angle plus who's this mysterious uh lightning uh demon lady i mean because obviously she's not bad either because all she did was attack mel to get the side so the question is like obviously it must be a situation of she wants someone out of tartars oh yeah i completely looked over the fact is the only reason why uh parker's dad wants one is because he's trying to free the harbinger of death not harbinger of death wait is that what it was called the harbinger demon whatever the case may be i might already blinking on it already but he just wants to use it to bring someone from tartarus who would know how to remove that spell that the Charmed Ones cast. So, I'm also curious when the Elders are going to find out that they don't have the Harbinger anymore. Like, they still don't know about that. Also, did I miss something? What happened to the whole Harry situation? I thought he was getting transferred, but I guess he wasn't. I guess he was getting a new assignment, but he's still bouncing back. I must have missed it. I swear I don't remember that popping up in the last episode, but maybe it did and I just missed it. I don't know, maybe, I'm, like I said, maybe I'm just being stupid. I don't know. But like I said, I'm very interested to see all where all this takes us going forward into the next episode. But really, that's all I want to talk about. To the next time we meet, be happy, be safe, live life to the fullest, and enjoy it. Good day, and goodbye.